For over 30 years, Sports Leisure Vacations has been taking baseball fans out to the ballpark. We are extremely proud to help underwrite this very special program. From softball to the Solons to the River Cats, baseball is a Sacramento institution. Play ball! When a player makes the leap from high school or college to getting paid for playing, that's the day they become a professional baseball player. There are many levels of professional baseball, but the pinnacle, where every player wants to be, is Major League Baseball, the big leagues. You never know when it's going to happen for you and I think that's what keeps guys holding on. The lowest paid players here make nearly half a million dollars a year. The highest, 33 million. I got six roommates right now. We got three guys living on the couch. You know, we're making 2,000 bucks a month. You know, that's pre-tax. <laughs> the low end are the independent league teams, usually playing in small towns around the country. For teams like the Chico Outlaws, filled with former major leaguers and major league hopefuls. The yearly payroll for the entire team is a third of what the lowest paid player makes in the majors. We really are basically getting a stipend for the opportunity to maybe one day make a very good living. You know, how much do you want to chase the dream? The minors are composed of fall and rookie leagues, low A and high A, double A, and the top level before reaching the majors, triple A. One day, a player is struggling in the minors. The next, they're walking through the tunnel in the major leagues. Some will make it this season. Some never will. Consistency and avoiding injury could make all the difference. You're in the minority if you don't have some kind of scar on you. And I was good. I was really cocky. I was kind of arrogant on the mound, and I'm trying to get that back. The high-A Stockton Ports and the triple-A Sacramento Rivercats are made up of the best young players for the Oakland Athletics organization. And on any given bus trip, players can look over one shoulder and see someone who will never make it, and over the other, they'll see a future millionaire. It's like, oh, you play baseball for a living, which is definitely great. We got three guys living on the couch. Uh, we have a three bedroom. I'm lucky enough to have one of the bedrooms in one of the originals. Uh, beginning of March, I go traveling all over the place on a coach bus, maybe an apartment with no furniture, because you've got to pay for whatever furniture you get. The biggest thing is probably how much we don't make. <laughs> One of my favorite stories to tell, we were in high A one time, and it's August, you know, 28, 29, and the season's two days away from being over. It's, we're in, I was in Florida at the time in the Florida State League. It's 100 degrees, I mean, it, and it is sweltering. And, uh, you know, a guy on our team, you know, hits a ground ball to second base, and it's, you know, going, we're 140 games in the season, going 80% on the line. There's eight people in the stands, and some guy stands up behind our dugout, and is just wearing him out, screaming at him, telling him he needs to hustle. And he's just like, I'd run it out for 80 grand a year. And uh, I looked at him and I was like, 80 grand? I was like, you don't know how much I make, big guy? And he was like, how much? I was like, at the time I was making a thousand bucks a month. He was like, oh. It's one of the rude awakenings that comes with life in the minors. Good hustle right there. You're that close to becoming a big leaguer, making big league pay, and your first bed away from your parents' house is a piece of foam or an old leather couch donated by your teammate's grandma. When I started, it was $850 a month. I mean, not a lot of money. For guys like me and you know, some of the other guys you know, that I'm living with right now, we're three or four years into our career. We don't have any big league time, so you know, Uncle Sam gets his cut. You're talking about walking away with you know, a grand, 1200 bucks a month. Just like in the apartments, on game day, you'll often see players piling into a car together. There's a reason for that, too. We've already had several guys, you know, they have their car shipped up here. They find out five days later, oh, we're making a change. And they don't pay for anything. So when you, you ship your car up here for a thousand bucks and they send you back down, you gotta ship your car back down for a thousand bucks. 
and then they two weeks later they call you back up, you gotta ship your car back up here or go without. Andrew Kerrigan saves money by living with a host mom, which is pretty much the equivalent of moving in with a super fan. As he sees it, it's better than the alternative. You want to get an apartment? Okay, that's fine. So two weeks into the season, guy ahead of you gets hurt. Okay, tomorrow you're going to be on a flight. You're going to go to Texas. You got the lighting bill and the heating bill in your name in California. So you've got to leave and you hope that whoever, whoever moves up there can take your spot in that apartment. And all year you're pretty much going to have that lighting bill and heating bill in your name. It, it, there's just not much stability whatsoever. So there's no stability and the pay is low to start. And they might have to move in with a rabid fan. But they do know, they've still got it good. I mean, we don't make a lot of money right now in the minor leagues, but we're still playing baseball and getting paid for it, so what's could happen. Outside of the low starting pay, the first shock for a minor league player is the time spent on the road. You're in the Texas League, there's a five and a half hour trip, like a six and a half hour trip, eight and a half, 12, 12, 13, and 13. For teams like the Stockton Ports, rather than spend money to stay at a hotel for a game that's 80 miles away, they make the trip for each game. Players get home from night games around one in the morning get up early the next day, do it all over again. Guys are pretty inventive. They sleep under the seats on both sides, and then some, one guy will sleep under, the other guy will sleep on top. So you deal with it. Soon enough, though, dealing with bus trips becomes the least of a minor leaguer's concerns. I was a 23-year-old prospect. It's all, you know, nothing bad could happen. <laughs> and then the world was going to fall into my lap at one point. And didn't realize that not only can you not perform, you know, get sent down, other things can happen, you know, you can get hurt. Dallas McPherson is 30 years old, an infielder, and a designated hitter. This is my ninth season uh, in professional baseball. Andrew Kerrigan is 24 and a relief pitcher. Dallas is older and has made it to the big leagues, playing parts of four seasons with the Angels and Marlins. Not long ago, Andrew was still being discovered. I was lucky enough to go to the showcase called the East Coast Professional Showcase. Threw one inning, started throwing up some 92s and 93s. All of a sudden, he's a prospect in the Oakland A's organization. For all their differences, what connects them, along with scores of other players, is that both their careers are currently in doubt because of injuries. I had a great first year. I was in big league camp my second full year. I got hurt in big league camp and the whole season was derailed off of that. Kerrigan's arm injury was frustrating because doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. It wasn't really cut and dry. It just had like, started with some forearm soreness. So we kind of went easy with it and took some time off. A short time off turned into a whole year. The reality of McPherson's injury might sting a bit more because he did it to himself. I hurt my back originally squatting 500 pounds. Looking back on it, did I really need to do that that day? Probably not. You know, could I? Sure. A young player making a young player's mistake probably cost him what could have been a long major league career. Compared to McPherson and Kerrigan, Michael Taylor's circumstances are a lot different. It began when he was nine years old. My mother thought I actually had a, like a urinary tract infection or something. I was using the bathroom all the time and uh, you know, had a real extreme dry mouth. We just went to my general practitioner and he, you know, he said, you know, he's not sick, it's not something like that. I mean, he, he needs to go see the specialist. Boom, they ran a couple tests and, you know, 14 seconds later, I'm a diabetic. Some baseball scouts are concerned about Taylor. There's talk that diabetics take longer to recover from minor injuries. 
when I got traded, there was kind of some some talk about that, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't think that um, the injuries I've had there haven't been prolonged because of my diabetes. But some feel it's also possible that Taylor's blood sugar could get too low, and he'd lack energy at a crucial point in the game. He probably could have hid his illness, but he chose not to. I'm being forthcoming with what one of my issues is, and that, that is that I'm a, you know, I'm a type 1 diabetic, and um, there are some things that I have to do to do it, but it doesn't inhibit me from playing the game at all. And uh, you know, so other guys have you know, family problems, they have you know, substance abuse problems, they have other diseases or disorders that they have to overcome as well. So um, every guy on the field has a set of circumstances they have to deal with. Mine just happens to include diabetes. For Kerrigan, the circumstances of his arm injury have gotten into his head. As a relief pitcher, it's Kerrigan's job to come in and bail the team out of a jam, intimidating batters through speed and skill. A tough task when a player loses confidence in himself. I haven't pitched in like real meaningful game in like over a year when I felt comfortable. So now it's just trying to figure out my mentality and get the speed of the game back. I mean, I was when I was good, I was really cocky, I was kind of arrogant on the mound, and I'm trying to get that back. I mean, I think that was kind of, that was a lot of the reason why I was so, why I was being so successful. I'm just trying to get that back. McPherson hurt himself squatting 500 pounds for show. Before every home game, McPherson's teammate, Corey Wimberly, also gives fans a show. Fans love it. McPherson thinks it's great too. He just has a different perspective now. It can happen like that, you know, you just never know when and where it's going to come and um, yeah, if I was, if I was Wimberly, I probably wouldn't be doing backflips, you know, but that's his personal choice and hopefully nothing, nothing bad ever comes of it. It wasn't long ago that Dallas McPherson was hurt, missed two full seasons and wasn't sure he'd play again. Today he says he's going to keep playing as long as he can because he loves the game. And he's having a good season. In fact, he's playing so well, he might get another shot at his dream. One last chance to play in the major leagues. Yeah. A lot of guys stay in the game because they don't know anything else. I mean, I was lucky to go to college for three years. Almost, I mean, I have three more semesters, I'll have my degree. But a lot of the guys that are high school guys, this game's all they know. And it's funny too because this is another thing I said when I was 23 and 24. I said, I'll never be that guy that's 30, 32 years old still playing AAA baseball. You know, I, I've got that college money, but I don't think I'll ever have a chance to use it. Um, you know, with having kids and mortgages and bills, I don't really have time to go back to school. So, you just gotta do this. And now pitching for your Chico Outlaws, number 46, Matt Parishon. When you're in the middle of thinking you'll be the next best thing, do you even consider what you do when it's over? I think about it, you gotta prepare yourself for it, so that way when you do get that call and your shot at this game is over, you're not just flat on your back with no clue what you're gonna do. You have some sort of an idea. If the big leagues never happen for Andrew Kerrigan and Michael Taylor, they both just have a few classes left to get their college degrees. For a player who enters the minors right out of high school, it's a different story. For the most part, Less than 10% of those high school kids make it, and what I've seen when, when, they, when they don't make it, they have four years of college left to go, and they're 25 and 26 and 27 years old, lots of them with families at this point. Now they're spending the rest of their life trying to catch up. The independent leagues, where the pay is low, is often the last stop for players who signed right out of high school. My name is Matt Parishow. I'm 35 years old. This is my 18th professional season. Oh. 
Parisho signed out of high school. But he was one of the lucky ones who made it to the major leagues after skipping college. It was easy for me because the same time that I would have been a junior in college, I was making my major league debut. He got the call up to the big leagues, May 27, 1997. Now, more than a decade later, Matt Parisho is a relief pitcher for the independent league Chico Outlaws. He's trying to show he still has something left. See right up there, bud. It's been like this for the last few years. And his family life has suffered. The last two years, I've been playing internationally in, in Taiwan. And I was gone 10 months out of the year. Um, and to come back, I was like a complete stranger in my house. You know, it, it was to the point to where, is this really OK? You have to think of what can I do to make my family life better. You'd think if a player could just make it to the big leagues, they'd be set for life. But most will need to find work outside baseball. And for the players who entered right out of high school, baseball is probably the only thing on their resume. And that's where Matt Parisho is, wondering what to do next. When you have to come to an independent league to prove you can still play, you know, it pays not that great. Um, it, it, it's, it really puts a strain on a relationship as far as, you know, marital, marital wise goes. You know, why can't you get out of there? You know, it, maybe it's time to come home and get a real job and, and make some decent money. I really think that maybe I'd like to be a coach. Um, you know, I, I do have 18 years experience to, to pass on to kids. Coaching jobs are few and far between. But Parrish is fortunate. He has big league experience. Things get tougher for a player who's never made it to the majors. Last year, I had problems finding a job. Sometimes, just as soon as you think you, you know, you're not sure if this is what you want to do, something good happens, and it's, you know, you're back to, you know, loving it. Notice the pause when Kyle Middleton describes his love for baseball. It's. I know, it's great. Why would you? I wouldn't trade it for anything. Pauses like that happen after a series of uncomfortable, borderline impolite questions about your age, the fact you've never made it to the big leagues, and what you plan to do when you can no longer play. The fact he answered the questions at all says a lot about his character. With a lot of class, Kyle Middleton answered the difficult questions. Nobody in minor league baseball wants to talk about the end. Kyle Middleton began his pro career in 2000. This year marks his 10th season in the minors. 10 years, never a call from a big league club. It's a pretty bad feeling not knowing, you know, what's going to happen and the uncertainty of uh, what's, gonna, what's going on. You know, something you've always done is, uh, might not be an option. That's a pretty low spot. At one time, Kyle was compared with one of his early teammates, Zach Greinke. Over the next several years, Kyle moved up and down between double and triple A. And Granke eventually became the 2009 American League Cy Young winner for the Kansas City Royals. He got a $7.25 million contract this year. It's hard to miss the shakiness in Middleton's voice. It says a lot about what playing 10 years in the minors is like. You know, I didn't know you'd get one day off a month, you know, I mean, little things like that, you know, uh, a lot of sandwiches and, you know, just things that, I don't know, I just, like I said, just had no, no clue, you know, long bus rides and, I don't know, I mean, there's just, this is just a grind. You gotta be, you know, try to prepare for it mentally. This year, the Oakland A's gave Middleton a call and assign him to the AAA Sacramento River Cats. Another step closer to his dream. 
When you ask him what he envisions the day will be like, if he gets called up, he just laughs. He says it's never gonna happen. Can't get too far ahead of yourself here, you know? I mean, I'm not, not a prospect. Um, there's, you know, we've gotta think about the future. And uh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just when Middleton was beginning to think it would never happen, things changed. Statistically, he started pitching as good this season as he ever has. He was even named Pacific Coast League Pitcher of the Week. I think I'm not trying to do too much. You know, if you just don't try to take everything in your own hands, um, good things happen sometimes. I hope it happens. I pray and wish that it happens. And if it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, I know it wasn't meant to be because you know I'm definitely doing everything I'm supposed to do or working as hard as I can to try and make that happen. So, but you know, sometimes you want to sit back and think, wow, it'd be great to you know put on that uniform and play. You know, just even if it was one at bat or one fly ball or whatever that might be, just to be able to say, you know what, I made it to the pinnacle of what I've been doing pretty much my whole life would be pretty cool. Whether low A or triple A, most minor league players never lose sight of making a big league roster. But despite his strong season, Kyle Middleton seemed to be losing faith. After several solid wins and his Player of the Week honors, sources within the organization said he had no idea how close he really was to a big league debut. But then, Middleton learned he had torn the labrum in his pitching arm. He'll probably need a year to recover. And he may never pitch again. Matt Parashow was well on his way to preparing for life after baseball when he accepted a coaching position with the Chico Outlaws. For the remainder of the season, he would play and would also serve as the team's pitching coach. But shortly after accepting the job, the Outlaws traded him to the Kansas City T-Bones, another independent league team, for cash and a player to be named later. In the minor leagues, players are always under a microscope. Scouts are always watching and can make or break a big league dream in an instant. I mean, that's what I've been thinking about since I was four years old. Not too many people that say that they got to do exactly what they want to do in their life. Andrew Kerrigan's season didn't go as he had planned either. Although his arm is no longer bothering him, his pitching stats all season were poor. He's looking forward to a fresh start next year, but he's prepared for whatever may come. I mean, young kids, or I still think I'm a young kid, kind of getting to live their dream for a couple years while they can, and then when it ends, you gotta go live the real life. There was a point in the season where many believe Dallas McPherson deserved another shot at the big leagues. A couple weeks ago, maybe I could have had an argument that maybe I deserved a shot, but you know what, I, I didn't stay healthy, you know. So maybe I would have gotten that shot had I stayed on the field, you know, a little bit longer. His back held up all year, but right when he was playing his best, he tore his hamstring, ending his dream of making it back to the major leagues this season. He'll be 31 next year, and he knows it might be his last chance. My bat speed's not slowing down, my reactions aren't slowing down. I'll probably, you know, if the right opportunity comes, I uh, could see myself trying to, to, to try to make it back one more time next year. At the beginning of the year, all Michael Taylor wanted was that one at bat in the big leagues. That's all I could think about. I was consumed with that thought, you know, and now it's more about just going out here and just enjoying playing here, enjoying my teammates here, and, and uh, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Most people thought Taylor was a sure bet to make the big leagues this year. So when he found out the Oakland A's weren't going to call him up, believing he needs more time to develop, he was upset with the news. But he quickly put it in perspective. Baseball has been a daily part of his life since childhood, but it's not his entire life. He says he'll let the game take him as far as it will, but he's prepared to walk away when it's time. You know, it's hard. Obviously, everyone gets down. It, it sucks when you're not doing real well, you're not doing exactly what you want to do, but um, I try to keep perspective and know that, you know, as you look back on it, um, you will have learned something, so that's all I can ask for.
Part of what makes baseball, the game that it is, is that at any given time, only about 750 people in the world are major leaguers. Beating those odds, joining that exclusive group is for most an unlikely dream. And that's why, come next season, a whole new wave of players will live on buses, sleep on floors, and do whatever it takes, all for the chance to make it to the major leagues. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit kvie.org slash viewfinder. For over 30 years, Sports Leisure Vacations has been taking baseball fans out to the ballpark. We are extremely proud to help underwrite this very special program. From softball to the Solons to the Rivercats, baseball is a Sacramento institution. Play ball!